Welcome to Vets to PM's Military Transition Academy podcast, the show where we discuss how to succeed in transitioning from the military service to the civilian workforce. This show and the academy it represents helps veterans transition into meaningful, lucrative post-service careers. Your primary host is Eric Doc Wright, PhD, certified manager, military veteran, serial founder, best-selling business author, philosopher, linguist, and coach. Your other host is Jeremy Burdick, project management professional, scrum master, product owner, and retired Air Force chief, and the current COO of Vets to PM and the Professional Development Unit University, where we will interview veterans successful in corporate America and business to bring you nuggets of wisdom every episode to make you more successful. Next, let's introduce today's guest. Our guest today is Rebecca Aguilar Gardner, and she's the co-owner of a successful SDVOSB DVBE second generation printing business. She has over 30 years of experience in sales and marketing and has been essential in the continued growth of the 50-year-old company. Rebecca has nearly 20 years of experience in organizing and successfully executing national veteran conferences. She's also a former chair of the San Diego Workforce Investment Board. Currently, Rebecca is active in Business Leaders United and was invited to the White House for a bill signing by President Obama. Rebecca is also a member of the Business Forward and has advised on the TPP and environmental issues. She was instrumental in getting California Governor Jerry Brown on site to her business for bipartisan bill signing concerning workers' comp. Her business has won several awards, including MBE Supplier of the Year and Family Owned Business of the Year. In 2016, Rebecca won the John Rack Award for her dedication in helping SDVOSBs and Rebecca was honored at the MCCSN Women Leading the Way luncheon in March of 2017. In May 2019, Rebecca received the Leadership Award at the third annual Women of Excellent Awards brunch, and her enthusiasm to truly help veteran businesses grow is infectious, and she believes collaboration is the key to success and that of the VIB network. Now, that's really what we're going to talk about during this show is the VIB network, and you can get their vibnetwork.org. You can also sign up for their newsletter by going to vibnetwork.org and scrolling down in the bottom part of the page on the right side, sign up for that. You don't have to be a business owner, but it's one of those newsletters that just has a ton of information. I, I, it's a long intro, but it's an amazing woman. And as, as we talk to her, you're going to find and hear her passion for the VIB and the different things that can help not just business owners, but aspiring entrepreneurs as well. So listen in and we're glad you're here. Hey, what is happening to everybody out there in MTA Podcast Nation? Doc and Jeremy coming at you live again uh, on the airwaves. And we have an absolute awesome guest today. Uh, she's a superstar and her organization is just as powerful. So without any further ado, because you heard her intro in the clip, Rebecca, welcome to the Military Transition Academy podcast. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm very excited. Right. Good deal. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Doc. Thanks, JB, for having me. Uh, so I'm Rebecca Aguilera Gardner. Uh, I actually come from a military family. My father was a Korean War veteran My uh, in the Air Force. My brother is a service-disabled veteran from the Air Force, brother-in-law, is Lieutenant Colonel. It was a Lieutenant Colonel in the Marines. And now we currently have my nephew who's uh, serving uh, in the Air Force currently. So, so I'm surrounded by military people. And then um, just, you know, growing up with, with a father, very patriotic. You know, I remember he him teaching us how to march in the backyard. So it was, it, you know, America and being American was always very important and near and dear to his heart. Uh, but I'm also a family-owned business. I, uh, my family printing business has been around. Uh, actually, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. So that is very exciting. Thank you. And, you know, ups and downs and sideways and everywhere in between, you know, it's it's been a wild ride. But uh, so I know as a, a service-disabled veteran uh, business how important these uh, contracting opportunities are. 
So we at Diego and Son Printing uh, would go after, I was in charge of the marketing and uh, my brother was in charge of operations. So I learned about the various certifications that are available to veteran owned businesses uh, for contracting opportunities. And through that, we were able to go from a one eight hour shift in a print shop to a 24 hour shift, um, you know, running constantly all the, uh, every day uh, with large corporate clients like CVS Pharmacy, MetLife, a lot of the utilities. Uh, so we have been able to utilize our certifications to grow our, our business. So with that, I was also, this is how the, the story is with the VIB. So I was uh, volunteering for another organization for about 13 years from early 2000s uh, to the mid 2000, 2016. And, um, you know, wanted to make some changes, got very involved, understood the processes and procedures, uh, got a lot connected with a lot of the corporations, the government agencies. And uh, through that, uh, myself and Cole Woodman, who is uh, the chair of the VIB, um, you know, just saw that there was a hole for vet established veteran business owners looking to connect with corporations, looking to connect with uh, government agencies. And, you know, there was, we've always heard the same thing. They can't find them. They can't find, where are you going to find the, who has the master database or where, where can we get that information? without people paying an arm and a leg as well for to get certified or to be part of a certification agency, but then they're gonna charge you, you know, you know, 500 to, you know, $2,500 to be part of a, a, a directory. So being, you know, being boots on the ground in business, understanding the service disabled entity of it, we decided that uh, there would need to be a lot of changes. So Cole and I, I uh, decided to start the VIB with all of those intentions of a real, real business owners. What we've seen was missing in the DVBE, SDVOB, VOB community, and really just putting our heart and soul, our own money, everything to get this uh, started. So we started with that intention of creating a national organization for more established veteran business owners to connect with corporations, government agencies, offering free workshops, webinars, and uh, program development programs, and a free directory, all for, for veterans. And so uh, with all of that, we feel that veterans have served their country, and they deserve these opportunities. And uh, so, so that's kind of how and what the motivation was to start the VIB is really just to be that, you know, liaison to the corporations, to government agencies, and to educate the uh, veteran businesses on how to approach those type of contracts. Because those are completely different from anything else that people might not know. So. And, you know, JB, that's why I thought it would be awesome if we had her on the show. I mean, you know, she's been working in a veteran owned business for decades. She's responsible for, in large part, I mean, it's a team effort, but she's responsible in large part for growing it to what it is. She, you know, they, they are crushing the uh, local San Diego uh, business market. Um, they're, they're trusted. They've been around for decades. And so she knows our vets. She knows the veteran business landscape. Um, she, I, I'll tell you what, you know, in an in a age of customer service being mediocre sometimes and almost like, you know, you got to pull it out of them like some a tooth or something. I mean, Rebecca has always been nothing but amazing customer service and, you know, so she, business guru. Um, and re, watch, I'm going to prove it. Rebecca, <laughs> so tell them, tell them about the wee bitty experiment you and Cole started with the national conference and then tell them what that thing has grown into, man. These guys are like Godzilla stomping around in downtown Tokyo, man, on old black and white film. Well, yeah, I mean, we uh, we just had our first year, you know, so once we launched the VIB, I remember telling Cole, I'm like, hey, you know what, we need to, we need to have a conference, we need to have, there needs to be a finish line in order to, I had been doing this as a volunteer for 13 years before this, I kind, I kind of, we I kind of knew the recipe and how to get things going. And uh, so I just took all of that 
and we ran with it. And and our first year, our first year of being open uh, and our first year in our conference, we had about 250 people that joined us our first year for our conference. And, And ever since then, it's been growing and growing. And then I think Doc came when we were up to 400. And then even our virtual, so in 2020, you know, we all had to pivot and shift. Um, we threw everything in the and, and the spaghetti at the at the ta- at the wall, and we had a great virtual event. We had about 650 people actually attending. We did all we did tons of really cool things. We did a lounge and where people can just pop in and talk to each other. We uh, spent money on an actual really robust uh conference virtual conference platform so people can connect with each other and then we had a bourbon tasting with horse soldier bourbon they came out and we let everybody know about a bourbon tasting so they could pre-order their bourbon and then he could talk about how to smell bourbon how to taste bourbon he was a he's a uh, army uh green beret and his story was that he was one of the first uh green berets to get into afghanistan stand on September 12th. So he came and talked about, you know, leadership at the beginning. And in the end, in that same uh, afternoon, he came in the evening and talked with a uh, Navy SEAL and about, you know, just how to smell uh, bourbon, what you're looking for, a little bit of war stories there in between. Uh, my biggest success is I think they only swore like three or four times. So that was good. <laughs> So, so it was really, it was a great experience. And then last year we had a hybrid. We had about 450 people join us virtually and in person. And this year we're, we're completely pulling everything, all the stops out for the conference this year in San Diego. Uh, We're already at record numbers. So I really do think this is going to sell out Uh, this year. What we have decided to do this year is more focus on uh, those connections that people lost during those two years. So we're we're having more um, networking opportunities. We're starting off with a business, uh, a team building experience. So if you register early by July 29th, you can participate in this team building experience where you get more one-on-one time with this corporation, government agencies, the estimators and the buyers. And then, and then you were, and then we're having a few uh, little general sessions, panel discussion, a few uh, speakers. Then we go into which I think Doc remembers is our tactical networking, and so so that's roundtable networking for about an hour and a half, and people get to know each other, they get to talk to each other, everybody gets a little one minute pitch. Then the corporations and government agencies for fifteen minutes, they get up and they move to a new table. Then we have, they have new corporations or government agencies. And what this does is it helps the veterans become a unit. So they support each other. They talk about, oh, you, your pitch was really good that time. This is what you should add next time. So they become a really great unit. So then when the uh, corporations and government agencies come, they get better and better and better every time they do that. And that goes on for about an hour and a half. And then that leads out into a reception this year, which we were having. It's called a, a veteran business um, veteran business marketplace reception. And this is going to be a little bit different. So it's all just veteran businesses who want to share their goods or talk about their services to corporations and government agencies. Kind of think about like a veteran only farmer's market. So, so that's the idea. We're going to have cocktails and, and food and music, and people can walk around to each veteran table and find out what they do. And, and then the next day, we're kind of reversing it. And then we have the corporations and the government agencies having have their opportunity expo. So, so those are kind of the highlights we're doing this year. We're also doing another uh, business matchmaking, old school business matchmaking, where people can set up their appointments uh, in person or virtual too in case people don't want to uh still have those one-on-one meetings they still have the opportunity to do it virtual because uh that was a really that was one of our big highlights uh the past two years is people really enjoy doing their meetings virtual because they can do multiple things so 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 that's that's kind of what our conference is all about so rebecca i am already signed up i am bringing stu uh stuart with me the ceo 
uh, and acting executive director of the Florida Association of Veteran-Owned Businesses. Oh, yes, I know, Stu. Uh, uh, yeah, we represent about 340 members, I think, now at this point. So out here in Florida on the east side of the country, we have about 180,000 plus veteran-owned businesses generating about $70 billion in taxable revenue for our state legislature. So they love us. Uh, we love them. Florida is a great place to be. And, you know, I spent decades in San Diego. I'm not going to tell you Florida is a direct proxy, but I live a block away from the ocean. I surf quite a bit. I fish quite a bit. It's a great place to own a business. They love patriots. They love taxpayers. They love small business. Uh, so I'm bringing Stu with me. Uh, he just is so uh, just in awe of what you guys have created out there, the conference itself and the larger organization. Uh, we definitely want to grow Fabob. So I'm Jeremy has... Uh, given me uh, lots of leeway. I'm in the barrel. Uh, they've picked up some admin stuff in the back office to let me go do biz dev with Stu and stuff. So the, my team is really supportive. I appreciate that. Um, and Rebecca, you didn't know this. I didn't put it in the show notes, but thanks for telling him about the bourbon because I'm trying to talk him into coming with me so you can meet Jeremy in person. So yeah, oh, yeah. you yeah. had me at bourbon. So. <laughs> 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 well, that was that was our 2020. That was all done virtually, and that was the highlight. I swear, I remember seeing people posting their bourbon drinks on uh, on LinkedIn, and they're like, and they have the they're watching the bourbon. You know, and in 2020, it was such a weird time, but we tried to. You know, you can't you can't ever replace in person and real face to face. But we we did a really close job. You know, we got we got people engaged and talking and. And as much as possible as we could. So, so that was the purpose. And let me just throw a little, you know, a little plug for ourselves. We actually won an award for our 2020 um, virtual event. We were uh, event of the year for the uh, when we received, received a Stevie Award. That's an international award, and we only got beat out by DHL Germany. So it's an international award. So we're a small nonprofit, but we're getting big kudos. So we, you know, that was all my team. Everybody put a lot of effort into making sure that we had a lot of different things going on. So it was great. Beautiful. Yeah. Sounds amazing. It really does. I, um, I'm really intrigued at, so now it's, is it, is it only the business owners that should be there? Who should be, who should attend your conferences? No, no. Uh, it, the veteran businesses, um, should attend who if it's their salesperson you know we love to have the veteran business owners there themselves but like my brother uh, he was always in operations at the printing business I did the sales and marketing so I would always go to the event representing the veteran business uh, the veteran business our veteran business and so so you know however a veteran business wants to utilize their people we understand you know a lot of times these owners are, it's a small company, you know, under 10, and the owner needs to probably be there. Uh, if they're not able to come, they can send a representative to uh, represent their business. And, and these are, we're, we're really getting a lot of different organization, more national people uh, will be attending this year. I just saw that Kellogg's is going to be in person this year we have t-mobile and these are people bringing their buyers and their procurement people so this is not just a hey you know they're having a booth this is procurement people these are real opportunities that are going to be happening i actually have been talking about i met somebody on the east coast the other day and he was saying um that he got one of his biggest contracts at our 2019 uh, event uh, with amgen and uh, he'd been trying to get into Amgen and he sat at one of the tactical networking tables and three weeks later, they put him into, uh, they, you know, put him in for a contract then. So, so there are real deals that are happening at this conference. And that's, that's what I, that's what we want. We want real deals to be happening. Um, this is, you know, there's a lot of camaraderie, but this is all about business. You know, this is all about getting those opportunities. It's all about business. It's all about you know, streamlining people to faster to the uh, the opportunities as possible. Yeah, if you if you were a um, for all the listeners out there, if you're a transitioning member and you maybe you're just interested in becoming an entrepreneur, it kind of seems like that might be a great place to go talk to some business owners and pick their brains as well, right? So maybe maybe you're not already in business, you're still transitioning, 
but you want to find an opportunity to talk to suppliers, buyers, uh, business owners. I mean, what do you think about that, Rebecca? No, it's true. You know, so one of our uh, one of our slogans is always with shared knowledge and support, all veterans can succeed together. So so that's what we truly believe that the veterans are used to sharing information. Nobody wants to see, you know, the brother and sister, you know, going through that horrible time that they went through when they know here, don't waste your time with that. This is what you should be doing. This is who you need to be talking to. So, so I think that that is exactly right. If you're thinking about starting a business, you want to talk to some experienced veteran business owners, you know, create those kind of mentorship mentality and getting somebody to kind of give you a little more advice on how to start a business. Uh, this is a perfect, perfect place to be, uh, to be. And, 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 and it's, it's pretty affordable for what everything that you get. I think it's $280. That includes like tons of networking, um, food, reception, dinner. I mean, there's a lot of food and a lot of networking. Um, you know, we're probably one of the best deals in town for what you get. Uh, I'm looking at conferences right now, and a lot of them are like seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars to attend, and they don't have uh, as much stuff as we have uh, because I've been a business owner, and you know things have been up and down, and I know what it's like. You know, we know that it's expensive to go to these events, but you need to go. So you know, you know, not only are you paying for you know the ticket, you're paying for your flight, you're paying for your hotel. So, you know, if you're paying, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars, you know, you're and then you're getting your flight and everything else, you're out the door of twenty five hundred dollars. And and then plus, if they're not giving you food, either you're on on for more. So, you know, you have to think, okay, what's your ROI for going to this event? So so we wanted to make the, the decision easy, you know, for a small business owner to be able to afford to come. Uh, that is ready to meet those those clients. We also even negotiated a really great group rate. I think it's 180 or something like that. Um, it, everything's going to be at the hotel, so you don't need to wander around or anything as well. You know, and I just want to point out something for those of you listening versus watching is that, you know, uh, and, and not to be a disparaging punk, but I've met enough business owners, part of FAVOB. I've been the treasurer at the Space Coast chapter. I've been coaching veteran-owned businesses for the last, I don't know, five, six years on the side, free on my dime, right? And I can tell you that one of the myths is, hey, I'm going to start a defense contracting business and like contracts are going to rain like manna from heaven because I can speak DOD. Or second myth, which is just as insidious and hollow is, hey, um, I just pinned on SDVOSB or, hey, I just got my 8A or my hub zone or my whatever, and contracts still don't rain on you like manna from heaven. So you, what Rebecca said is worth its weight in gold. I mean, I went two years ago, right, Rebecca? I was out there and did an afternoon keynote form, and we got probably, I don't know, $50,000 worth of exposure off of one event. I mean, so divide, you know, 300 bucks into 50,000. I mean, there's our X that we got in return for that. So Rebecca and her network of folks and the company she brings, and you heard her talking about Amgen and stuff. I mean, these folks will literally sit down with you. That speed dating thing was incredible to watch and be a part of. I mean, you literally are going to meet people who can help you win contracts, who can say, man, that was the lousiest pitch I ever heard. Or, hey, that pitch is nine and a half on a 10. Let's make it a 10. And oh, by the way, I know somebody you can go practice on that's actually looking for that thing right now. You, you got to get to this thing and you got to meet those people and you got to have conversations like that or you can wait for it to rain, do a rain dance. But I hear that's a lot of timing and that's about it. That's, a, that's one of the things that we always say, you know, the certification is only going to give you the key. You still have to put the key in the door, turn the knob, open the door. There is a lot of works and a lot of steps that you still need to do. And you still need to be cheaper, faster, and better than your competition. Uh, it's just it, all it's doing is giving you one little opportunity that you need to figure out how you can take advantage of it. And and at one and our conference is one of the conferences that we really do blend not only corporations but government agencies as well. So you'll if you want to start hitting the government agencies, we'll have a few there as well. 
you want to start talking to the corporations, we'll have them there. And then there will also do a panel discussion of, you know, co corporation versus government, how to prepare for both, because there are different entities and how you need to prepare your business. If you want to go just for government work, that's a whole different animal. If you want to go for corporate work, they're expecting different uh, things from you as well. And just to, and, and Rebecca won't brag about it, but Jeremy, check this out. This is one of the reasons I'm trying to talk you into going, brother. Check this out. So just two examples. So networking event, one of the networking events. Now, listen, I've been in Florida for like seven years at this point. I haven't seen San Diego in, in dang near a decade. I'm networking with people doing business, but I'm doing it over some of the most insanely awesome breakfast burritos they had brought in that I've ever had in my life, right? I mean, they, we don't get Tex-Mex in Southwest Tex-Mex in Southeast Florida, man. It just doesn't happen. That's network event one. Network event two is we're literally out on a little beach in the marina on Harbor or Shelter Island, San Diego, Rebecca's got a mariachi jazz band going. The dude's just crushing the trumpet, man. It's got a cool vibe going. There's an open buffet line of these different tables and drinks and food. I mean, so like that's networking. Like not only the least painful networking events you're ever going to go to, but man, they're primed with food and cocktails and music. And it was so insanely cool. Um, it, you can't believe they pay you to do it. Like I'm at work, right? It's a business event, but <laughs> you're slamming <laughs> breakfast tacos and jazz and whatever. It was amazing. It's yeah. true. It's true. We do. We do. Well, I think when people are happy, they're be, they're more prone to listening to people and giving those opportunities. And and we're trying to create the environment so that the corporations, the government agencies are happy to be working with veterans. They want to work with veterans. And we want, and then we want our veterans who are there, our business owners, you know, to really maximize that experience. Because what Doc was talking about, that reception right on the beach, that was right after the tactical networking. So after those like little round table networking, everybody walks out onto, this time it's going to be the uh, veteran uh, marketplace. So they're all going to walk out to the veteran marketplace so if somebody stopped by your table and you're like, oh, I want to, you know, talk to a T-Mobile, they just stopped at our table. You know who they are, you know what they look like, you know, once you go to that reception, you can see them beeline over to them and have a nice casual conversation then. So so what we're trying to do is, is make little pockets of networking throughout so that by the time the second day rolls around, you've met everybody. And by the dinner, by the time the dinner happens, you you they're all good friends of yours then. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Well, and then so where would I start? Like, what's a great place for me to one register, sign up, or just even learn more about your organization? How do I how do I find you? Sure. So the first thing you want to do is our website vib conference or vib network dot org, and so so you go to that, and we want uh, we have a free uh, directory database. So you want to make sure that you are uh, joining our di directory database. Um, we actually utilize that a lot. So corporations and government agencies will reach out to me directly and say, hey, do you have anybody who does logistics? Do you have anybody that, you know, is uh, IT? And this happens at least three or four times a week. And I'm talking about large, large corporations looking for veterans uh, nationwide. So, you know, if you're in Florida, whether you're in Texas or Idaho or anywhere in between, um, they are looking for you. So we really want to encourage that this is not just a California. We started in California, but our reach for corporations and government agencies are is a lot further than that. So, so we're currently talking to a few organizations in New York that are very based in New York. So, so we do need as many veterans to, to join our, uh, our directory. And if you're service disabled veteran or veteran and certified, there's a little place for you to put your certification and give us your numbers. If you're not, if you're a veteran business but are not certified, we still want you to participate. We still want you to join. So you can still uh, create a profile on our directory. And, and you know, it's all about education. 
If somebody probably doesn't know about the certification, they're only a veteran business. It's not only a veteran business, but they're a veteran business without a certification. Um, we're here to educate them too. What the benefits of getting their SDVOB certification? How can that help your business grow and succeed? And how do you utilize that certification? So, so that's where we called ourselves veterans in business instead of service disabled veteran or anything else like that, because it's uh, there's a lot of education that needs to be done to make veterans aware of these certifications, the benefits and how to use them and how to go after these contracts. Wow. So, wow. so that's one thing. So yeah, so join the directory. And then after that, come out to the conference. Um, it's, it's a blast. You'll not only meet, you know, these corporations, government agencies, you'll meet tons of veteran business owners. Um, you know, we're, we're try, we try to create a fun, really fun atmosphere. We are doing a team building, like I said, this year, which is going to be really fun. I think, we're at, and that's going to start off at 8 a.m. So, you know, when you go to a conference, you kind of like, okay, who do I know? What do I know? Uh, we're going to, we're going to throw people into the, uh, to the deep end right away and get them all connected, you know, first thing, 8 a.m., um, and if they register early and, uh, you know, they'll be they'll be team building with corporations, with government agencies, fellow veterans. So they'll all be working together on a project. And uh, so through that, they'll be able to get to have that one on one time. But, you know, about an hour with them talking, working through issues, working through problems, you know, a little bit of trivial, trivial pursuit kind of thing. So a lot of different things that we're doing starting off eight, eight o'clock in the morning. So, uh, so we're pretty excited about this new thing that we're adding on. Wow. That does sound like an event. So we get to your vibnetwork.org, sign up for the directory. Once you're there, look up the conference mm-hmm. and register early. Yes. Yes, register early. Also on our directory, we have a lot of uh, workshops and webinars, uh, webinars that we have conducted so they can find that in the news and events page. We're also, um, there is the new infrastructure bill that we're helping, we're we're working to push. uh, That is Driving Veteran Success Act. Uh, That's to get veterans the opportunity to get part of this infrastructure bill. Um, so, so check that out, call your representative to support that infrastructure bill. That's, that's good for veterans, you know, nationwide. We, you know, right now there is no real, not set aside, but there's no real goal for veterans. So this will establish a goal by, you know, by, uh, getting this bill passed. Oh, wow. And then on your website, you've got that infrastructure bill like laid out and yes. it's is there a channel there to get to their representatives as well? There is. Yeah. If you just go to the website and go to the news uh, tag, uh, it'll be the first thing at the top. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah and I know that uh, the Florida uh, Stu and the organization is supporting this. We have over 30 veteran organizations across the country who are supporting this initiative. Well, you know, and that's right, Rebecca. We So that's Florida, right? And you know, the, we, Stu and I, when we go out and do biz dev for Favob all the time, you know, what we tell our legislators is, hey, look, right, we know you've got a lot of economically disadvantaged groups to worry about. We know you guys want to spread the love around. We get it. All we're asking for, though, is a fair shot. Mm-hmm. I don't need a handout. I don't need a hand up. I just need a handshake. I'm a vet. I'm a vet on business. If you're like Vets of PM, almost all of us are either service disabled veterans ourselves or we're sons and daughters of veterans. So like yourself, I mean, we're patriots through and through, right? So, um, you know, how every other economically disadvantaged group gets a set aside or an opportunity to shoot, uh, uh, you know, at a goal and, and get some business, except for veterans, is, is uh, it's just beyond me. I don't think it's right. So that's why we are doing local legislation at the state of Florida. And, you know, we're partnering with you guys. You're doing national legislation. Um, You're doing California legislation, which is probably one of the toughest, you know, toughest uh, states in the union to get the the business legislation through. But anyway, I mean, it's just uh, like you said, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all in the same mission. Some of us are doing infantry. Some of us are doing air support. Some of us are doing logistics, but we're all doing the same mission, right? Yeah, exactly. And you know what? And and you brought up a, a good point about, you know, the opportunities. 
Uh, so we always, when we're talking to legislation, we're talking to people, we always tell them, you know, veterans, this is, you know, starting a business, they're starting that later in life. You know, they have, this is their second career. So they're starting, you know, they didn't go to, they might have not gone to college right after high school. They went into the, you know, the military and could have stayed there for, you know, four, six, eight, 20 years and then decide to come out and start a business. So they're kind of behind a lot of others. And then also uh, when it comes to service disabled veterans, uh, some of their injuries might shorten their time in business as well. So if they have an injury that, you know, some sort of something that might inhibit them from, you know, walking or anything, um, you know, they have a they have a they have a clock on their system. So they have they push hard to get their business successful so that they have this, you know, for their family uh, later on. So, you know, they might be 40 or 50 and they know they need to push that for, for 10 years. So, so there is, there's a lot of complexity when it comes to the veteran business and the service disabled veterans. And they should be, I mean, they really should be uh, a lot of that opportunity as well, as well. I'm glad you brought that up. I, mean, I think that's really, it's a, it's a really cool insight to see that you're thinking, you're putting yourself in that position, right? You, you probably spent the prime of your life serving your government, getting your body beat up and learning languages that are not really translatable all the time. Like an infantry officer or an artillery, maybe, maybe that is, maybe it's not. There's just not a lot of transition for business ownership from those positions. There's lessons learned, there's experience and not to take anything away from that, but you have to go relearn a new language, the language of business, right? And management and all that. And you're doing that while you're trying to establish a business you're building a beachhead and you're trying to get through. So the VIB, it kind of sounds like, hey, they're, they're the people that are going to go clear the zone for you, tell you which way to walk through so that you don't get shot up on the way through the front door. So I love that. I think that's a really cool analogy. And it I speaks to the fact that you've walked in those shoes and at least have witnessed people walking through those shoes uh, so you can help them out, help them not step on that landmine. And, that, and that's the whole purpose. That was the whole purpose of the, the VIB network and the purpose of why we keep it a free organization too. You know, we are re really relying on our corporate sponsors um, and the conference to be the, to be able to give us the funding in order to, you know, be able to have these great events, great, uh, uh, you know, webinars. We have a veteran business to business cohort program which is for established veteran business owners, like a peer group where they talk about their wins, learns and losses. So, so we really want to continue to have these programs and we utilize the, the conference and the corporations and give back into the VIB network. And we in turn just continue to give back and think about new programs and how else we can um, you know, share all of this information and these programs of the veteran business community. Yeah, and you and no I love longer that. wonder how it's grown so fast, how, do you? I mean, <laughs> I knew, I knew you, you coming on here, Rebecca, would be a treat. So, <laughs> thank yeah. you. As we wrap it up, I mean, where do you see it going in the future? Well, I do. You know, so we are here in California this year, and one of the reasons we kept it in California um, is because, well, because of COVID this year, because we didn't know if if we were going to have, if there was going to be another outbreak or not. So we're trying to keep it at home base, but we do, our conference will be starting to move out of the state next year in 2023. We have a couple of options. So I don't know where we're going yet, but it is going to be outside of California. And, uh, and then eventually it'll start traveling. So around, uh, around the country. So, so of course, Texas, Florida, New York, uh, everywhere in between. And then, you know, we're actually growing our uh, advocates as well. So we do have advocates in Texas and Florida and, and uh, on the East Coast as well as California. So those are the boots on the ground kind of people who are telling us what's happening in their community and how we can help. Uh, so, so with the, the future of the VIB, I think we're just gonna continue to grow, become a more a bigger national organization 
And I, I, I think people have really uh, loved our mission and what we're doing. And I think we'll just, you know, keep our head down and and uh, and do the work, what, what it takes to keep uh, veterans at the forefront for these opportunities. Wow, that's really great. That's really great. Doc, any parting words before we wrap this up? No, Stu and I will give Mickey a call if you guys want to bring that thing to his backyard. So just let us know. <laughs> That sounds great. Oh, double, definitely. Don't even think about, I'm not going to call Stu. Yeah. <laughs> Orlando Orlando is a big place. I mean, they've got the Gaylord Center. They've got the Disney Resort. There's, you, you know, you can't, you can't shake a stick within 50 miles of Orlando and not find an awesome place to have an event. So Ooh. anyway, that's yeah, awesome. so yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, one of the places we're looking in the future. Yeah, well, I can't wait to see you, uh, Rebecca. Can't wait to catch up with Cole. I haven't seen him since the last time I was out there. I'm uh, going to catch up with some Navy buddies uh, while I'm out there. Um, I'll have some books along, some coins, and uh, just super excited to, to get out there to San Diego again and attend your guys' conference. It's amazing. And every year, it seems like you add 100, 150 people. So that's it. Great. That's that's what I think we're going to do this year too. So we're pretty excited. We're scared and excited. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I would definitely let people know if they want to come to the conference, uh, they should register early. Uh, at, the way our numbers are pacing now, it does look like it might be sold out sooner than later. So, um, and if anybody who came to our 2019 conference, they were, the hotel was completely sold out. So we had to go to a secondary hotel. So, um, so these are realistic things that could be happening. Um, good problem to have, but, uh, but yeah, so we want people to come, but, uh, you know, so register early. That's all I'm going to say, register early. This is, this is the year to do it. All right. And it's November 14th and 15th. Yes. So to not to time stamp this thing you hate to do that on uh, television programs or radio shows or podcasts but it it you want to get after it it's november 14th 15th of 2022 um but regardless if you don't go to the conference get on that directory yeah that way you can be a part of the vib network yeah. uh, thank you rebecca so much for coming on the show i really appreciate it i think it was a lot of a lot of great information for uh, future business owners as well as current business owners that are veterans. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doc. Thanks for inviting me. This is great. JB, really nice to meet you. And however else that we can support and, and you know, whatever you need us to do, we're always there. Thank you for tuning in and spending a bit of time with us at the Military Transition Academy powered by Vets to PM. If we piqued your interest, but you want more details, please head over to the website vets to pmcom and see if we can help prepare you for a better tomorrow or a future meaningful and lucrative career.